the natural state of the human mind is completely clear and relaxed at all times. The natural state of the human mind is infused with the clear light of wisdom that is present in every moment. And that field of clear light that is the mind <clears throat> registers different impressions that are our thoughts. And many of us learn that our mind is comprised of those thoughts and so that's what we just learn to pay attention to, to pay attention to all the thoughts. And we never learn anything about the completely relaxed, stainless, flawless nature of the mind itself. We don't even know it's there, most of us. And even if we hear something like that, we can't believe it or we can't believe it applies to us somehow. But this is only because we've trained ourselves to pay attention to all the thoughts, to pay attention to all the thoughts, to believe that those thoughts are who we are, and to identify ourselves by a history of those thoughts that we've had throughout our life. So this can be likened to looking up in the sky at night and seeing all the, the stars and planets. That state of existence of just seeing all the thoughts and taking those to be what reality is. It's like looking up at the, star, at the sky at night on a very dark night and clearly seeing all the stars and planets. And to actualize and enliven the basis of mind, the clear light of mind, is like looking up right now at the sky filled with daytime light and none of the planets and stars can be seen. They're all there, but they're outshone by the light of day. So these are two illustrations of, of the different way in which our human mind can appear. One is where like the, the planets and stars at night are so vivid that it's only our thoughts and uh, other impressions that are really, really vivid in the mind. And then the true nature of the mind is that where the impressions continue to register but they're not the basis of anything. They, they aren't referred to as any kind of referential process that gives meaning to what life is. Rather, the wisdom mind itself, the wisdom mind, the clear light of the wisdom mind outshines all these other accumulations of impressions that just flash by one after another, like uh, dream images. and. Uh, if it wants to play around with some of them, it can, and, it, and uh, if it doesn't want to, that's fine. Whatever they are, they are. But they're not referenced as having any particular meaning or importance. So, you know, this is really important for us to know about our minds because if we know the true nature of our mind, then we can be happy in life and we can provide immediate benefit to ourselves and those close to us through wisdom and we can also provide very immediate benefit in the world. So this is a very simple way of looking at what the Great Freedom Teaching talks about and this can of course apply to anyone. It has no cultural specificity and it really doesn't even relate back to any kind of personal identity or individual. It's just a characteristic of what human beings are. So even though this can be addressed in many ways, philosophical, metaphysical, spiritual, scientific, it, it really doesn't have any reference points and it needn't have any reference points. It's simply the functionality of what the human mind is in a very basic way. 
it's not mysterious, it's not esoteric, and it's up to us what we want our minds to do, really. It's entirely up to us. If we want to spend all of our life thinking that we're all of our opinions, in other words, all of this thinking that's flashing around like the stars and planets in the sky at night, then, then we can. And if we want to familiarize ourselves with this clear light of wisdom that is the field of all those impressions, then we can do that. And well, how to do that, you know, it sounds so good. A completely relaxed mind at all times, night and day, <laughs> shining with the clear light of wisdom, that sounds awesome. Well, you know, not only does it sound awesome, but it's a vivid reality. It's a vivid reality here, and it's a vivid reality in uh, more and more people in the world who have this vivid reality 24 hours a day of just the clear light of the wisdom mind that isn't referencing all the thoughts all the time in order to make sense of the, of the world that doesn't live out of any kind of personal opinions but rather is completely at rest in this stainless flawless forever empty expanse of, of a mind that that doesn't rely upon thinking to decide upon anything. In other words, it's wisdom that's relied upon. It's just the relaxed wisdom, the naturally occurring wisdom that is at the basis of everything. Now another way to think about this is that this mind that is completely spacious and wide open, uh, it doesn't really have any kind of location. We can't really say where it is. And all these thoughts that appear within it by which we describe a world and a life and other beings, all these thoughts that occur within it are the dynamic energy of the mind. They're just the dynamic energy of the mind and nothing else. They're not something that's powerful in their own right. The thoughts have no independent existence. They have no power in themselves. There is not a single thought that has a power that's independent of mind. Now this is really important because the dynamic energy of the mind never affects the clear light of the mind itself. The dynamic energy of the mind has no effect whatsoever. This is very practical to us because many of us have learned that our thoughts and what we think are what describes what our moods are. So we, were, we pass in and out of all of these different experiential moods in life based upon what we're thinking. Thinking that these labels that describe our thoughts have some kind of power in their own right. Like we think of painful memories from the past and we can't stop thinking about them. So, and we wake up thinking all these thoughts in the morning so we think, gee, I'm gonna have a crummy day because I've had this flashback of memories or whatever it is. And so we, we learn to use our mind in this very limited way to describe ourselves and what's going on in the world. We believe that these thoughts have an independent nature that can somehow control our well-being, but the thoughts themselves have never had the power to do that. It's just the way we use these thoughts, that, that we're relying upon the thinking and what it describes rather than on the basis of the thinking. The underlying basis of the thinking the, is the clear light of completely relaxed mind that's always at ease and always wise. It always knows what to do and how to act without thinking about anything. This is very important because it takes us outside the parameters of a mood-based life. 
Has anyone here ever had a mood-based life? <laughs> Going in and out of the moods during the day. I only see one hand. <laughs> uh, going in and out of different moods during the day, like different weather patterns uh, moving through and subjecting our own well-being to these moods and then probably subjecting others' well-being to the moods as well. <laughs> I'm in a mood, so I'm going to draw you into my mood. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to blame you for my mood. <laughs> and maybe that's how I'll draw you into it. So the, the, uh, the importance of this is that all these descriptions that float through the mind, they, they're really all equal in being the dynamic energy of the mind. Their label does not impute any significance or importance to them. It's only in our choice to impute significance and importance to the labels rather than to just relax as the clear and open space of mind that uh, causes pain, that causes suffering, that causes us to feel like we need to have lots of opinions in order to substantialize ourselves and who we are, in order to substantialize an identity and show other people who we are. So when we rely on all our thoughts, then we say, well, these are my thoughts, and I'm going to let you know who I am by telling you what my opinions are. And uh, so when we live that way, we pretend that we're made up of all these opinions, and then we try to match up with other people who have the same opinions that we have. And to live this way is extremely limited, and we can see how it causes disharmony within ourselves, and it causes disharmony in relationships too, in, in families and in communities and nations and the world. Uh, when, when there's this disharmony within of a mood-based existence that's so focused on thinking and, and all of these labels, then no one feels relaxed, everyone feels tense, and everyone's kind of suspicious of everyone else. We may have all these great ideas about oneness and global human culture, but those ideas are just philosophies, they're political ideals, unless in our own being we have the decisive experience in every moment of the oneness of everything the complete oneness of everything that is allowed by the realization of the wisdom mind, by this wisdom mind that is at the basis of everything. <laughs>